Perfect, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikey of the Gloom in the Corner of the yeah, Building! Hell yeah! We gotta start it off right. <laughs> we gotta do it right. Dude, thank you so much for joining. <laughs> we've been fans of your band for so long. Uh, we've actually got to chat to a, a different member, but it's an awesome pleasure to have you on the show, brother. Uh, for those that may not know who you are, sir, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment and plug or promote anything uh, in the world. Um, I am Mikey from the Gloom in the Corner. I sing or yell at people. Um, I'm currently based in Brunswick in Melbourne, Australia. And it is 1.01, I think, or 1.02 p.m. in the afternoon. Hell yeah. And, uh, of course, we got Trinity coming out October 28th. Congratulations. I know a ton of work went into that. Thank you. I do want to play some stuff off of it. But before we uh, dive into all that, how long has Gloom been together? How long have you been working on this to get it to the level it's at right now? It's got to have been many years, <laughs> I imagine, right? Um. Yeah, so we've been around since 2016. But... I guess you could say we've kind of taken the band a lot more seriously from like 2018 onwards, I guess. Um, so we've been a quote unquote serious band for four years, but it really only feels like two because of lockdown. Um, so yeah, but yeah, you're right. Like a lot of hard work has still gone into it and everything, but yeah. So we've been around for a hot minute, which a lot of people don't realize, but here we are. Here we are, <laughs> here we are now on Sharp Tone. Congratulations. Uh, there are some. There's a bunch of chat questions coming in. Uh, how did Sharp Tone come about? Um, it's funny actually, because like we we actually talked to Sharp Tone back in 2018, um, before Villain and Flesh and Bones dropped, and we pitched to them like Flesh and Bones and everything. And unfortunately, at the time, it was kind of just like they were still fairly new. Um, they were still kind of like not figuring out what they want to do. Like they had a clear vision and everything like that, but um. Because we are Australian, they were very much like, oh, we're not sure how like how we feel about taking on like a local Australian band as of yet. Like we're we're not sure if we quite have like the connections and everything to do it, which is, is absolutely fine as well. Like we were still super young and still like. So wait, wait. So they essentially were like, we want to sign you, but we just don't know if we can take care of you the correct way. A couple of years ago. Yep. Wow. Yep. Awesome. So but that was back in like 2018. Yeah, and then once we got Tuck on board to manage us from fit for a king um that was when the sharp tone discussion came up again and uh tuck made that connection and sean was like well yeah i've seen how you guys have grown over the last few years and you know how your image has changed and how you've become a lot more professional <laughs> i guess for a lack of a better term um and so i think we're ready to kind of like take you on now, which is real cool awesome uh frequently you bring up sherlock bones is he considered an actual member of the band <laughs> no but he is a he was a uh a big character in the story so we're a concept band for people who don't know and um sherlock was one of like the main characters from the previous arc um he has appeared in the last couple of videos that we've put but they're more so as like robots i guess um for people who don't know like the two main protagonists sherlock being one of them died at the end of ultimate Pluvia. And that was kind of like our way of segueing into the new arc, going forward with the new characters and everything. Um, but yeah, like those past characters had relationships and stuff like that with Sherlock. So we kind of like we kind of made an excuse to bring Lockie back to play Sherlock again um, for Flesh and, oh, Flesh and Bones, for From Heaven to Hell and um, Pandora's Box, just so we like just so there's some sort of like recognition there. Effectively, but he was a big character. Whether or not he, I wouldn't say he's a, I wouldn't say he's a member. I'd say he's a mascot. <laughs> okay, so he's like he's like the extended family. Yeah. Hell yeah, Sharp Tone. <laughs> Sharp Tone was yeah. was kind enough to send me the album early, so I have listened to it and it's superb. And I want to know how you linked up with Monica of the Last Martyr. Oh, she lives like around the corner from me. <laughs> oh, really? That's awesome. Small no, world. Well, yeah, no, we're we're both uh, we're both Melbourne based, um, and so one of our friends put us in touch with each other, um, and we're able to make that connection, I guess. But um, yeah, no, she's she's awesome. She's a good friend. 
Yeah, we we love the last really runner around here, so women as well. I'm rooting for them to to get picked up by somebody too down the road. Now, now being that you are a concept band, how do how do you go about like let's pretend Trinity's out and it's been a year or two and it's discussions for the next album. How do you start the next mm-hmm. chapter of of the storytelling? Like how does what is that process? Um well, I've already begun. Um, I kind of have to stay ahead of myself a little bit, I guess, uh, to make sure that, you know, like by the time that we do get around to recording or releasing the next record that um, I've kept on top of everything effectively. Um, so yeah, generally like I'll start piecing together what I want to do story-wise. I, I mean, I guess now for lack of a better term. Um, and I'll start like fleshing out like what I want each song to do, like what the, how the story is going to go and everything like that. Um, if there's going to be any little like side EPs or side stories or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I'll just kind of like go from there. Like my brain is just constantly. But do you have like, a, do you have like a bunch constant. of notebooks or like a giant whiteboard in your house where you're like connecting the strings to like make we, the story fit? A, I have a, yeah, I, I definitely have like the whiteboard. Um, <laughs> What we actually did for Trinity was I got up a Google Doc and I made like um not a flow chart, what's the other one? Like a Venn diagram. Okay. Or like a like a piece together like diagram of like how I want each character to be represented. Um like kind of like flesh out everything from there to make sure that like, you know, like everything is kind of as I said, like well fleshed out. Um and that, that like each song has its own specific tone or purpose if it's coming from a certain character. Um so, like, a really great example is, uh, like, the character of Rachel on this record whose songs are, like, Obliteration Imminent and Pandora's Box and Gravity. Like, her songs are a lot more, like, somber, lyrically, I guess, like, a lot more well thought out and timid. Um, I also made sure that there was no swearing in those songs as well and staying true to that side of the character as well because um, she's me- meant to represent, like, the last good, quote-unquote. She's the light. Um character she, yeah yeah exactly and then like you have like the ronin character um for songs like ronin and behemoth where it's just balls to the wall like self-righteous anger um and like hostility for that throughout the entire thing um really and you know like everything's kind of like chaotic and i guess kind of like throwing back to flesh and bones a little bit as well with like narcissistic traits and stuff like that and i think that's very evident in songs like behemoth um and then for like clara's character as well like i just made sure that everything was chaotic from like the writing um like of like going through the motions kind of way and then yeah i mean that's pretty much the way that i kind of wanted to set the tone is like make sure that each character has like a specific kind of style much like you would like building out a character for a tv show or anything like that I wanted that to transfer across into the lyrics. Um, yeah. And so like when, when writing lyrics, I just had to make sure that I kind of kept to that formula when it came to writing them. Like, how would this character feel in this situation? How would they speak, et cetera, that kind of thing. Very cool. It's so thought out, man. I love it. Uh, my, my co-host today is JB. A lot of, JB. A lot of work is going I, I see that. Uh, <laughs> JB, this is Mikey. Uh, what questions do you have while I queue up, queue up one of the new <laughs> singles real quick? You know, I, I'm just starting out as an artist myself and uh, making music. And I, I want to know, uh, the gloom in the corner, when you guys were first starting out, what were you doing production-wise? Who was handling all like the recorded music? Were you going to someone professionally, or were you guys handling it more independently? So for Femi, um, we did it all independently because at that point in the band, we weren't sure... Um, how far we were really going to go or how professionally we were we did want to do it effectively for me was just done as like a, oh i want to use this as an outlet for music and i want to be able to tell the story like this so because it, it is like an own personal project um we're just going to do everything ourselves and like i've studied to become an audio engineer as well so i kind of had a few uh tricks of the trade i guess under my rope when it came to recording everything um, which is what we also did for Trinity, but under different circumstances because of lockdown. And I'm also just much better at it now than what it was six years ago. Um, but from everything from Homecoming onwards, we've pretty much had a producer in. We had Scotty from Alpha Wolf produce the vocals on Homecoming and uh, all of Flesh and Bones. And then we had Jamie Marinos, who 
did uh, Ultima Pluvia, and he did. He used to be in a band called Sentinel down here, um, and he's currently. I'm not sure if he's in or just currently touring with Pride Lands, um, but yeah. So like we've we kind of fifty fifty it effectively um, is the best way to put it. But like yeah, Trinity we did all ourselves, but that's just because of lockdown circumstances really. Um, and that was like the only way that we could actually like feasibly get it done. Also from like a monetary perspective as well, we wanted to make sure that we could put as much into the visual side of things as possible. And so um, we decided to take a step back and just like let ourselves do it for lack of a better term. And I think this time around it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly enough. Hell yeah. Let's jam, oh, right let's jam uh, yeah. Pandora's box, and then uh, we'll dive back into a couple more questions. Let's see what we're talking about here. Did you, get, did you guys stumble across her from, from all her YouTube covers, or how'd you find her? Yeah, I was about to, like, Tuck was the one that, like, put us through to her, um, but I knew her from Crazy 88. Okay. Um, and... Like that, like that's where I knew where, like that's where I knew her from at least. I didn't realize that she was in another, like that she had red-handed denial, um, effectively, which sounds really bad. But <laughs> um, he was like, "Oh, you got like get Warren on this track, kind of thing." And I'm like, "Ah, right, cool. I'm down to if you're down to." So he made that plug for us, and it was pretty much pretty much took it from there. Hell yeah! When you uh, when you're not working on music, what's just like a random hobby or two that you have? I play a lot of video games. What do you play? What do you What are you gaming right now? Right now, um, I'm playing Siege, like Rainbow Six Siege. I play a fuckload of Siege. Okay. Um, probably too much for my own good. Um, and I'm waiting for the new COD to drop as well. But no Call of Duty Mobile. No, <laughs> I tried. I tried when Damn I was it. Cool, and I was like. <laughs> 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 It was funny, we were on tour with Banks Arcade in New Zealand, and Harlan, the bassist of Banks Arcade, he plays COD Mobile as well, just while he's on tour, and he brings around a fucking controller with him to play it, mm -hmm. and he, like, connects it via Bluetooth and everything, and I'm like, oh, you're so nerdy. Like, not even I'm that nerdy. I, I play Call of Duty Mobile every single day, so I get I get what he's what he's talking about. But I don't use the controller, though. But, um, let's see, uh... Is this sharp tone? I mean, you can't. I know some stuff can't be announced yet. It's all planning and you know prom promoting and <laughs> stuff. But is there plans to have sharp tone get you guys over to the states sometime next year? Next year is a big is a big like up in the air if. Um, like I'd love to say I'd love to be able to say yes. Um, oh no, where's that going? Thanks, headphone. Yeah. Um. I'd love to be able to say yes, but the visa logistics right now, especially for Australia, is just fucked. Like, when Vov went over, I think, like, they had to go to Singapore in order to get their visas, like, fast-tracked and approved. So it's it's kind of wild. Um, that being said, uh, we do want to come over. I think, like, international touring is definitely on the cards for next year. Um, but whether or not it's the U.S., I'm not sure yet. That's the only thing. For sure. Uh, I do want to do some trivia. I'm going to have JB ask another question but while I look up trivia. But the catch is, Mikey, you get to pick the topic. What movie or oh. TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Oh, fuck. That's a real tough question because I've, wa I've watched a lot. Um... Well, what's your favorite genre? Horror, comedies? I, mean, I, I love horror and comedy, I guess. Um, I love I, I love everything. That's the thing. Like, I love everything. Oh, that's so the new the new um, Halloween Ends came out today. Yep. So that, that's what I'm that's watching cool. tonight. But what what would you pick? Oh, do you need a second to think about it? Okay. G yeah, give me a second. Um. Okay, I'll play I'll play Ronan real quick and stall for you. Okay. We'll do some promoting. We're hanging out with Boom in the Corner. If you guys are feeling it, man, please support them. Hit that follow button. Album comes out October 28th. It's called Trinity. All right, what you thinking? Okay. What you thinking, movie or TV show? Fuck, I want to say TV show because I feel like there's there's more to it than just like yeah. Um. Simpsons, Futurama. 
I was going to say, just to piss off Paul and get half of everything incorrect, I kind of want to say it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Okay, we got we got a bunch of trivia on that. Uh, JB, hit, <laughs> him, yeah. hit him with a question real quick. Let me look that up. So let me ask you, mm -hmm. as being a vocalist, a screamer, is there certain precautions that you follow yep. to make sure that your yeah. throat, throat is staying healthy? Yep. Um, I'm actually glad you asked this because I recently got into doing the David Benitez Extreme Vocal Institute course. Um, and like after the New Zealand tour that we did in August, I was feeling pretty rough afterwards, especially after the Fit tour as well in July. So just doing them back to back like kind of threw me out, for lack of a better term, especially after being off for two years. Um, and so, like, I did a practice run in between the era tour that we just had and uh, the New Zealand tour, and I was like, ooh, I've, I'm not feeling, like, super great after this. I feel like I've kind of lost a little bit of what I had back in 2019 and 2020. Um, and so I started doing that course at the recommendation of a few people, and it's an astronomical difference. Like, that dude really knows his shit. Um, what was his name again? That, you're, that did uh, the... David Benito. David Benitez, okay. Yeah, he's uh, he runs a platform called Extreme Vocal Institute, and he he does private lessons one on one, but I didn't do them. He has like a a course on like a how to like a how to scream kind of course. Um, so I started doing that, and even just from like the first like third of lessons that I've done before going on that error run has been like an astronomical difference. Um, you know, like it's it's kind of that classic, I guess. Uh, vocalist or screamer vocalist trope of like, oh, I just scream, you know, like, I guess that's kind of the way that I kind of do approach my vocals as well. Like, I had the fry technique, I guess you could kind of say, but I don't think I was doing it safely or correctly. Um, and on like, and to kind of show like how much it improved and how much that shit actually works, like, I got pretty sick by the last date of the era show, um, because of my own fault. But I got pretty sick after that Sydney show, and I was like, "Oh, I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to be." So I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to perform tonight. Um, I'm going to do his warm-ups and everything as per usual, just treat it as per usual and see how I go. Um, and it was like I wasn't sick. Wow. So, yeah. That's awesome. I'd never heard of him. I know a lot yeah. of people that use Melissa's techniques, Melissa Cross, but I'd never, I'd never yeah, heard of Melissa's him. Yeah, Melissa's a big one too. I haven't, I haven't, I personally haven't sussed her stuff out, or I, if I have, I haven't in a long time. Um, but I know a lot of people like highly recommend her as well. Um, but it's one of those things if you're just getting into it and like you kind of like want to learn how to do it safely and properly, David is a really good starting point, or at least a really good starting teacher. Um, yeah. And he's definitely helped me. He goes around with like all the heavy bands now as well. Like he's just come off tour with Fit for a King. Um, he was on tour with Ice Nine Kills and we came as Romans and all those fun, fun peeps. I think he did stuff with Motionless and White on that Trinity of Terror tour um, as well. He's busy. And just, he's a busy boy. Yeah. <laughs> he's busy. We can tell. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're sunny in Philadelphia trivia. Oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh, no. What type of community service did Dennis, Mac, and D? What, what, what were they assigned to after throwing the bag of burning poo at the building next door? Oh, fuck. Um, it was trash collection, wasn't it? It is not trash fuck. collection. I thought it was trash. Dang. We yeah, have stumped you, my friend. It says they uh, were, were uh, assigned to coach youth basketball. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that episode. So we got you. Fuck. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We're gonna spin the wheel for you anyway, cause you're awesome. See what it lands on. Oh, I like yeah. I like how behind you, by the way, it says like every hour is beer hour. I like that. Oh son of a Mikey, pick a number one through six one through fifteen, and I have to chug some hot sauce before we exit the interview. Oh, I've got to pick 13. It's our favorite number in the band. 13. Heard. JB, JB, <laughs> let's, do, let's do final questions. Ask uh, whatever you got for the final, and I'm going to pick number 13. Here we go. 
Let's see. Let's see. Um, what is what is another genre that you enjoy uh, listening to other than you know the personal one that you you deal with almost every day? Mm-hmm. Ghost um, Pepper. I mean, if people haven't picked this up in Glue, might be surprised, but like a lot of cinema soundtracks or mm. um, movie soundtracks, etc., like that kind of thing, or just soundtracks in general. Um, I love a bit of jazz. I think we've got jazz playing in the bar downstairs right now, which is nice and cool. Oh hell yeah! Um, and I love jazz. I mean, I love like I love rap and I love pop as well. Um, so there you go. There's three. <laughs> <laughs> right on. My bad, my mouth's on fire. It landed on the ghost pepper one. Oh, you, or so not, sorry. it landed. You picked number 13, and I mix them up every day. <laughs> and the ghost pepper one was what? So, I'm suffering. Mikey, I'm this, is, this is a lot of fun, man. <laughs> I know you're a busy guy. I have one final serious question for you. I'm going to attempt mm-hmm. to get it out. What is? And I ask everybody that we have on this show the same final question. What is a piece of musical advice somebody in the music industry has told you that kind of changed the game for you. It made you take your career a little more seriously or a terrible mistake you made when the band first formed that you don't want any starting up band to make. I think, yeah, I, I think it is. <laughs> um, I can't think of a specific one for the first one off the top of my head. Um, I think like definitely when it comes to starting out as a band, um you should be going to a producer and everything um i think like there's kind of like this stigma now because of lockdown that like just because you have a scarlet two i two and a guitar lead and you're you've tried reaper for roughly 20 hours does not mean that you can <laughs> produce everything yourself um as we kind of learned with fear me um I think that like if I like, if I could go back and do it again, I would do fear me with producer properly, um, and have somebody from the outside analyze and look at the songs. And I think like until you get to a certain point, like if you're if you're really stuck and you have to produce yourself, like that's okay. Um, but it's not just from like a song, in- I guess integrity standpoint or production standpoint. It's also like the quality, of the, like the quality of the recording and all the files and everything like that. It's, there's so many more layers to it than just like, oh yes, I can just write a song and this will be good. Like it comes down to the editing, it comes down to like the takes and everything like that too. So I think if you're definitely starting out in a band, it is definitely worth putting in that extra money to go to a producer at the end of the day. Definitely You'll be better it. for it. Hell yeah. Well, dude, Trinity's coming out October 28th. We're really excited about it. I've already got the opportunity to hear it. I'm hoping there's a video for Black Rot. Eventually my fingers are crossed. But, dude, you should be very proud. It came out fantastic. Uh, please get the visa so you can come to the States. We can catch the live <laughs> show. That'd be awesome. But, Mikey, please don't be a stranger. You're welcome back anytime. Congratulations on Sharp Tone. Congratulations on Trinity. And uh, just keep being badass, brother. Thank you, boss. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikey of the Gloom in the Corner! Give me a hell yeah! Have a fantastic day, sir. Cheers.